Today we are venturing into a groundbreaking opportunity that's just opened up for Indian investors all over the world. The ability to tap into Bitcoin through the recently listed spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US. 11 Bitcoin ETFs were listed last week on 11th Jan. They did a volume of $10 billion in the first three days, which is more than three times the launch volume of all 500 ETFs launched in 2023. Join me as I sit down with a special guest to demystify the process of investing in these ETFs, explore the rewards, and navigate the risks. Hi, Viram. Welcome to Bitcoin Lighthouse. Hi, Sandeep. Great to be here. Thanks for having me here. Viram, I'm so excited to dive in the question that all Bitcoin investors in India have, which is whether they can invest in these US spot Bitcoin ETFs. But before we do that, tell us a little bit about your company, Vested Finance. Yeah, so... Uh, Vested has been around now for uh, almost five years, four and a half years. And uh, we started off with the uh, core premise that, you know, Indians uh, have never gotten access to the international markets in an easy manner. Uh, while uh, foreign investors have always invested in India, the, the reverse has never been easy. And uh, that is what we wanted to solve. Uh, we wanted to make it easy for, let's say, somebody to buy Apple stock, Amazon stock, Tesla stock. And uh, that's what we've been doing over the last four and a half years. Recently, we also added uh, more assets on the platform. So overall, now we are an um, alternative investments platform. So we added more assets on the India side as well. Uh, you'll soon be able to invest into bonds, P2P lending, uh, solar, all of those uh, uh, assets from the Vested platform. Super interesting. It's a coincidence that we both were guests on the Economic Times podcast on Bitcoin ETFs, uh, the episode that they just had uh, this week. And I saw your LinkedIn profile and found out um, about you. And then we, and then I realized that we have a common connection in Rahul Pagdipati, who now owns Zepe and runs Zepe, uh, the crypto exchange that I co-founded. And I believe is also a major investor in Vested Finance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He led our uh, Series A and, uh, and, and has been super uh, helpful since then. So... Uh, it's a small world somehow. Yeah, absolutely. And if you have time, we'll get a little bit more into that. Um, but let's dive into the most important question. Can Indians buy these recently listed US spot Bitcoin ETFs? They very much can. And uh, uh, so basically this entire process through the LRS route uh, is available to an Indian investor to invest into these Bitcoin ETFs. In fact, since the last four five days, we've almost seen 300, 400,000 in uh, transaction volume on the platform already. Of 300, 400,000, which is what unit? You're talking about US what? dollars? Yes, right. yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, as folks have tried out, mostly smaller size trades, retail investors trying out how they can invest in Bitcoin ETFs. So there's definitely interest on the platform. And uh, you can do it through the LRS route. It is a, a, a regulated and becomes a relatively easier way if you want to hold Bitcoin for the longer term and add some exposure to your portfolio. So one of my YPO friends who, uh, you know, I connected with you and you, he had a conversation with you as well. He was struggling to buy this ETF through his interactive brokers account. When he tried to purchase these ETFs, he got a message from them that clients from your country, which I mean belongs to India, cannot open positions in crypto related products. So what's your take on this? Yeah, so I think uh, what that what that message is sort of catering to is it says that, you know, you cannot invest in speculative instruments under the LRS. However, uh, what we believe and what we've uh, sort of gotten opinions on as well is that an ETF is not necessarily a speculative product. It's basically a fund that you're investing in through your uh, brokerage account, right? So uh, this this very much should be okay. I think uh, somebody like an interactive is a much larger player and India is a very small focus for them. For us, our platform is very much catered to the uh, Indian investor. And so we look at all of these regulations and and, and sort of uh, are able to take calls that, you know, a larger organization might not be able to uh, sort of move that quickly. So what's the process if somebody is interested in India? Um, walk me through the process of what they can do if they want to invest in a Bitcoin uh, ETF in the US. So what one would do is basically they would open a US brokerage account. So they would go through our KYC, which is instant for 99% of our customers. And uh, so once you're done with that, your brokerage account gets opened. Then you need so to- So you are a US brokerage account? Correct, correct. Got it. 
Yes, so we are a broker dealer in the US with the Finra, and uh, and so we open a, a brokerage account whenever you come onto Vested in the US and and do your KYC. And uh, it's sort of similar to like a a, a demand account that we'd be opening in India, right? And so once that account is open, you need to load dollars into it. And that's where the LRS or the liberalized remittance scheme comes in, where an Indian resident has a two and a half lakh dollars, $250,000 that they can remit abroad in a year uh, under this scheme of the RBI. And within this scheme also, they have uh, the RBI has mentioned that you can use that money to invest into uh, equity markets abroad. So that's what you would do. We have partnerships with some banks going live with more soon to make the process simpler uh, you can simply use your net banking or use our partnerships to load money into your account and and then once it's in then it's pretty, it's pretty simple you can just look for a bitcoin etf and then start investing so just to break down the process uh, in a little bit more detail i think for the lrs you have to submit a form a2 to your bank and in the form a2 the purpose code that i think you're referring to is s001 correct correct so that's the under the purpose code which you are allowed to transfer money to your brokerage account, which would, in your case, would be vested. Correct, exactly. So now that A2 form is completely digital, when we started our journey four years back, it used to be a, a hand-filled paper form that you would have to submit. But uh, thankfully, maybe a little bit credit to us to, to sort of digitize the entire process. We worked with banks to be able to make this simpler. And so now that A2 just gets generated on the back end and uh, you just give the instructions on the front end through I, our platform or through the bank's platform and all of it gets done. So I have seen in the past that, for example, how I give an example of interactive brokers refusing to do the transaction, though it's absolutely legal and abs allowed, at least as per your and my understanding under the gamut, gamut, uh, you know, under the category of LRS, um, sometimes even banks refuse to transfer uh, the money. Uh, so which banks have you had that kind of an experience and which banks do you have partnerships with? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. And and what we've seen, they are hesitant and, and, and rightfully so is that the money should not be used for direct crypto investing. And that's a route that uh, a lot of folks have exploited, which is not really allowed as such. And uh, in this case, it will be a bit of an education that we need to do over time uh, to let banks know that essentially this is just going into the brokerage account. Then if you invest into Apple or you invest into a Bitcoin ETF, uh, that is the purview of the investor, right? So uh, I think that'll be a little bit of an education. Some banks ask for what you're investing in eventually, but most banks, it's an online process without any intervention. So it should be okay. We today have a partnership with uh, Axis Bank. We're launching a, a couple of uh, bank partnerships very soon with some large banks. And then the process will be much simpler with uh, a bunch of different banks. Are you concerned that if you allow your platform to be, you know, um, for Indian investors to access uh, Bitcoin funds through your platform that you might have some regulatory issues over here or uh, issues with banking relationships. Is that a concern? Not, not as such at this point because it's really like any other ETF that anyone might be investing in from your brokerage account, right? So there are almost 2,000 ETFs in the US market and uh, just that this is a newly ap uh, approved ETF, that's why it's getting attention. But we don't see this as, as anything different because you're not directly buying cryptocurrency and that should be okay. Uh, however, if there are any concerns, we will engage with uh, the appropriate regulatory authorities and, and sort of explain to them how this is kind of a, a plain, you can't restrict uh, investing in a particular fund, right? That becomes very tricky. Absolutely. And I agree with you. And in fact, as per Indian laws, even investing in cryptocurrencies in India is allowed. Right? You pay your taxes, the tax uh, guidelines are there. Okay. The MCA guidelines are there. So there is no reason that they should be disallowed. I'm just playing devil's advocate, of course, with the uh, with the questions. From a regulatory standpoint, um, anything that you think that Indian investors should be aware of before investing in these Bitcoin ETFs? So they, they should be aware of, one, the LRS regulations, which is that you have a $250,000 cap. Uh, there is a, a TCS, which is a tax collection at source that is applicable with the LRS. So uh, that gets applicable if you're investing or if you're remitting more than 7 lakh rupees in a year, uh, you pay 20% as a, as a tax collection at source or TCS. And then you can offset that whenever you're filing your taxes or you can get a refund whenever you're filing your taxes if it's more than your tax obligation. So I think uh, just overall LRS, TCS is one thing that one must know. Uh, the other thing I think would be uh, relevant to know is how the taxation of these Bitcoin ETFs work. And uh, 
So basically, it's treated as any other ETF that you'd be investing in a foreign market. So there is a, a, a long term threshold of 36 months. And uh, in, if you're if you're a short term, uh, if you qualify as a short term investor, then the income tax rate is as per your tax lab. If it's more than 36 months that you sell after 36 months, then the long term rate of 20 percent uh, with indexation benefit kicks in. So I think these two, three things would be good for somebody to know before they get started. So now there is a discrepancy or actually you can say there is a benefit in investing in Bitcoin ETFs via uh, versus buying Bitcoin directly in India. Because I think the tax um, regulation, if you buy Bitcoin and cryptocurrency currencies directly in India is a flat 30% tax. And there is also a transaction uh, tax. Um, but if you are investing in these Bitcoin ETFs, it's actually not about the Bitcoin ETF. It's the fact that you're investing in a fund uh, that still enjoys a long-term um, capital gain uh, benefit. So I think there, there, is, a, uh, there is an advantage uh, right now, especially due to this discrepancy. Correct, correct, correct. And, and for somebody who is a longer-term investor, this, this definitely helps them versus buying direct cryptocurrencies uh, in India at least today. Is there any aspect of uh, exchange rate volatility which somebody has to consider uh, in this investment so they would have to uh it's basically because you're converting rupees to dollar so essentially your investments are happening in dollar and uh depending on when you bring it back then the different rates would apply so what we've seen i mean traditionally over the past few years it, it reaches that it's an added uh sort of return that one can look at where the rupee tends to depreciate and has depreciated by about uh, three to four percent a year over the last ten years. So, uh, but yeah, it, it it does add an additional layer of sort of um, the risk or consideration that one has to look at because there is an exchange rate uh, or there is an exchange rate conversion that is involved. I think that's applicable to kind of uh, U.S. based assets. Bitcoin is a global asset, so anyways, even when you buy it in India, the rate of Bitcoin is what the U.S dollar rate is converted into Indian rupees at that time. So I think in terms of Bitcoin investments, the exchange rate volatility does not really matter to Indians. But yeah, if they're buying a Tesla stock or stocks abroad, then they are getting the return of the investment of that stock, plus the advantage of a, a dollar appreciation or a rupee depreciation, whatever you can consider. Correct, correct. Yeah. So for example, when we started our journey, the dollar to rupee was at about 70 uh, four years back. And, you know, now it's at 83, 84. So whoever started in that initial phase has maybe about 10, 12% of returns additionally from just holding those dollars. And for someone who's never done an investment through the LRS route, what is the process of getting the money back? So suppose they want to sell this Bitcoin ETF or any of your other investments in the US. How do they get the money back into India? So they can keep the money there in dollars if they want, whenever they sell. So you can just keep it as cash in your brokerage account, buy, sell for however long you want. Yeah, whenever you do want to bring the money back, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you do, uh, you place a withdrawal request on the platform. It's a wire that happens back to your India bank account. If it's through one of our bank partnerships, then it gets credited into your bank account uh, easily. If it's to another bank, then essentially they will tell you that, hey, you've received dollars in your account. You know, what was the purpose that, uh, what is the purpose that you want to disclose? So you just tell them that this is for investments that I made abroad. And then that's that. Uh, they credit the IRR into your bank account quite uh, easily. And when is when does a tax event happen in your Indian accounting books? So for example, you said that you can buy and sell through your brokerage account uh, in the US. So do you record all the transactions in your books or it's only when you transfer the money to your brokerage account and when you bring it back in? Right. So the tax event does happen when you sell or whenever, not when you move the money back, but when you sell actually. And uh, one thing that we have done uh, since, since we began is we provide these tax reports to our customers. So as per Indian regulations, you know, there are two or three things that you need to do. If you have foreign assets, you have this, what is called a schedule FA, which is a schedule of foreign assets. So you need to just disclose how much you have in assets. And then you have these uh, capital gain taxes that become applicable to you. And the third thing is there is a dividend withholding. So basically uh, there's 25% that gets deducted directly whenever you receive a dividend, but you can take credit for it in India if you want. 
Now, typically, only if you have a large amount of dividends would you want to take that credit because it's an additional process when you're filing taxes. But for all of these three things, we provide literally everything that you would need to file for your taxes and claim that uh, dividend credit or file your capital gains taxes. So all of that is very simplified uh, for an Indian investor now. Right. Uh, in, on your website, you've written investing in US stocks for NRIs. What's your target audience? Is it Indians based out of India or is it Indians, non-resident Indians? So uh, anybody who comes on the website from outside India sees that page. Uh, if you're okay. in India, you might not uh, end up seeing that page. But, okay, got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in Singapore, so that's the reason I saw that. Correct. correct. We do have a good uh, NRI base on the platform as well. Just through word of mouth is how uh, folks have ended up on the platform. And and Singapore tends to be one uh, big uh, sort of place where we do have customers, the UAE, US, of course. So uh, yeah, if, if an NRI wants to invest also, they can use our platform. So in which case, um, they have an option between any other US brokerage um, service like Interactive Brokers or also go with uh, Western Finance. That's what you're saying. Correct, correct, correct. So there, an NRI, of course, has more options uh, available to them. And uh, typically, because this is somebody recommending us, uh, it's sort of a, a, a more trusted platform that they then end up coming on to Vested versus the other solutions available to them. Do you know of any other competing platforms which are allowing investments in Bitcoin ETFs uh, for Indian investors? So just generally, platforms that are uh, allowing US investments from India are limited. There are maybe two or three and and if anybody looks they'll definitely find those so uh, it's it's yeah it's it's just these platforms that that sort of uh, you can one can use to to invest into bitcoin etfs uh, in the us markets through india and what's your personal bitcoin take i know you did not get into this business as a it's not a crypto business you are a traditional finance business what's your uh, what's your bitcoin do you have a bitcoin or a crypto story <laughs> i think uh, I do from my days in the US actually when uh, when I was doing my MBA so uh, that's when I got introduced to the world of crypto and 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 understood actually the world of crypto how things work as well and, and that was when I made my first investment as well so when I was in the US I could open a Coinbase account and and uh, do some investing then and 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 sort of I've kept that account with me uh, since then but uh, now use my vested account to make investments actually and uh, I think since then, after I got, uh, of course, you would know, introduced to Rahul, uh, that journey has been uh, accelerated a little bit as well, because uh, being around folks who are, are hardcore believers, maybe somebody like you as well, uh, it really then keeps help you, uh, helps you think about it more and more. And so since then, I've uh, also been looking at both uh, Bitcoin and, and, and Ethereum also at the, at the same time, um, more seriously and, and, and sort of increasing the exposure in my portfolio to them as well. Yeah, of course, I love that guy, but we have basic differences in our uh, of our opinions of the crypto wars. <laughs> he tweets every day about Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, yeah. and uh, you know I'm 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 focused mainly on Bitcoin, and that's a completely separate conversation. Yeah. Uh, I think to balance his influence on you, I think we need to spend more time with each other as well. <laughs> I would love to. I think I'm uh, very much in in the echo chamber here, and then would love to have different perspectives rather. All of us are. All of us are in echo chambers of our yeah. own kind, right? Yeah. Um, would love to know what other products. I know you've kind of mentioned, and this is primarily, of course, a conversation around Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, but uh, anything else that uh, does that Vested Finance does, which uh, you know, put the audience listening to this podcast would could be interested in. Yeah. So uh, a couple of things. One is, of course, within the U.S. stocks universe itself, there are a bunch of different opportunities beyond Bitcoin ETFs as well. Uh, we find that our platform is a very good way for uh, folks in India to take exposure to emerging themes. And, uh, you know, not surprisingly, before Bitcoin ETF, the two most popular sort of investment avenues were one to get exposure to AI. So something like an NVIDIA or uh, ETFs that provide you exposure to, to AI or uh, let's say electric vehicles or clean energy. So uh, something like a Tesla uh, and then an, again, a bunch of ETFs that provide. so it's a great way to get exposure to emerging themes which might not be available let's say within the uh, domestic india stock market right because that's still evolving so i think that's one one thing and and just generally diversifying beyond uh, one country removing that country risk from your portfolio helps by investing in the us market what we are also doing is uh, 
adding more India assets. So that's the second thing. What we believe is just vested is one destination or should be that uh, one stop destination for you to diversify your portfolio. So we had global diversification through the US markets. We're adding more India diversification assets as well. And we've launched Vested Edge, which is our uh, P2P investment platform. Uh, within that, what we've done differently is that, you know, we split the investments across multiple P2P platforms in an automated manner. So you're reducing your risk. Uh, we've always believed in kind of helping our customers manage their risk when investing in alternative assets. So uh, What's that's a something that we, platform. So essentially peer to peer uh, lending. So we give exposure to that sector through our vested edge product by working with uh, um, RBI regulated NBFCs. So we have two that we've started with and uh, we keep adding more. And then coming up soon is uh, the ability to invest into solar assets, the ability to invest into uh, INR bonds. So both of those will be coming up very soon on the track. And these are Indian solar assets. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I only specialize in Bitcoin, but I have to say all the products that you're kind of mentioning are super interesting. And I'm sure that the audience listening to it has, uh, you know, uh, wants a diversified portfolio and which for which they can come to Vested Finance. Um, Viram, thank you so much for doing this. How can people reach you and reach Vested Finance? So, I mean, they can always, we have our uh, contact details on the website. For my contact details, one can just email me at any point in time at uh, viram at vestedfinance.co or uh, we are fairly active on social media as well. So just uh, give us a shout out there if there's anything that you need help with. Anything else you want to add which I might have missed? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think just overall uh, for an Indian investor that's looking at constructing the portfolio, I think one thing that just I'll add is uh, we believe that you know alternative assets are the future and and of course crypto falls under that category uh, you have a bunch of other different alternative assets as well i think over the next 10 years or so our portfolios will look very different from what they were like earlier if you look 10 years back then it was purely just you know gold or real estate maybe even not even mutual funds now we've started adding mutual funds direct stocks some crypto I think 10 years from now, it is going to be small pieces of different assets uh, that are all accessible sort of via your phone. And uh, so to participate in that future, I think building a strong alternative assets portfolio becomes very, uh, very important and helps you create a diversified portfolio as well. So I think that's my only thing that I'll add just from somebody who's thinking about portfolio creation pers uh, perspective that, you know, start creating that alternative asset portfolio. And that's somewhere that's where we want to help our, uh, our customers or folks from India to, to invest. Uh, on that note, thanks everyone for listening to this episode. To get my Bitcoin price analysis and other Bitcoin related content that I publish, subscribe to my newsletter at www.btclighthouse.com. Uh, thanks once again, Viram, for uh, coming on Bitcoin Lighthouse. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me here. And thanks for all the great questions.